economic, social and social religious and immediate cause. First we will take up the political cause. The annexation policy which was followed by the British sister company was one of the main cause for the outbreak of the evil. The army generals like Lord Wellesley and others had by these reforms of policies of subsidiary alliance and others had tried to keep the Indian rulers of princely states under their control. Still not satisfied by this, Balazi introduced the doctrine of flags whereby several states like, I mean, according to this Dalhousie the policy of doctrine of flags, any ruler who died without natural aid, his kingdom would automatically lapse into the British Empire. And the, uh, for the adoption that had been taken prior to the introduction of the policy, adoption was not recognized and for further adoption, the approval from the East India Company authorities had was to be obtained. By, what, by introducing this doctrine of labs, Dalhousie annexed several kingdoms like which we have mentioned in the last class, Jaipur, Jansi, then Udaipur, Sambalpur, Nagpur, and others. Also by this, by adopting the subsidiary alliance, Dalhousie occupied with the districts of Beirut, Ismanabad, and Raichur from the Nizam's state. He also abolished the pensions and titles of several adopted rulers like Patya Tope and Nana Fadnavis and others. Besides, he also confiscated the estates of Jagis of the, and Jamidas and Halukdas. The Mughal Emperor was also was given the, his pension was stopped and he was asked to leave the palace. In 1856, Dalhousie annexed, had annexed out, which led to the unrest among the ruling class. With the annexation of these states, the Indians were left, left unemployed and most of the people became unemployed and for all these the sufferings that the people held rest, the company authorities were responsible for their sufferings. Then nextly, due to subsidiary alliance, when the army of the native states were disbanded that also led to the discontentment among the soldiers. Then, the seclusion of English officers, that is to subject the racial discriminative policy, which was adopted by the Britishers, also was one of the cause for the outbreak of the revolt. The Indian 
When he joined in the circus, he could not get any promotions and his salary as compared to the Britishers used to be very low. He was paid very less salary, which also led to this disparity, led to discontentment among the Indians. The introduction of new judicial laws also was one of the cause whereby it also it, the justice had become dearer or costly to the Indians and the laws were new to for the Indians which did not comply with the Hindu Dharma Shastra that is also said to be one of the cause for the discontentment. Besides this, we also have military causes. The Indian sepoys, who could not dream of any other high post, were paid very, very low salaries, even though they fought more bravely than the British soldiers. The lack of promotion for the Indian sepoys also led to discontentment. The number of British troops in the Japanese army was less, whereas the number of Indian troops or sepoys were more. In spite of being in large number, they were humiliated or ill-treated by the British officers, which uh, was, had become difficult for the Indian sepoys to digest. And the Indian sepoys were made to participate in war, wars which were fought in foreign land like Crimea War, Burmese War, War with China, that is Opium War, War in Persia and Nepal. And in all these wars, even though the Indians had fought bravely and the Britishers had won because of the support of the Indian sippers, they were not paid any incentives in the, after the victory of the war. This also led to discontentment. Then the Indian sepoys were ill-treated by the Britishers. They were reduced to almost slaves. This also was another cause for the discontentment in the Bandi Indian sepoys. Then nextly the Troops were made compulsory to go out of India, where many Brahmins who had joined us, Brahmins and other Vaishas and other caste people who had joined the army as Sipas, believed that crossing the seas would lose their caste, and British trust, West India Company authorities, had deliberately introduced this rule to pollute or spoil the power system. Then the indecent behavior of the British took towards Indian women also led to sort of hatred against, among the Indians against the Britishers. So all these military causes were all men help make the Indian sepoys to take anti-British, to feel anti-British feeling which led to the outbreak of the revolt. Then coming to the economic cause, the Britishers who had been following free trade from the time of 
Galazi during the rule, Indian wealth was drained out of the country due to the commercialization of agriculture, where not only commercial crops were they introduced or the farmers were encouraged to produce commercial crops. Crops also were produced with the view of marketing them and the British East India Company authorities exported all these food grains and supplies to their mother countries, which led to the shortage, food scarcity and man-made famines in India. The annexation of princely states also led to the birth of patronage to food handicrafts and other village industries and which saw the deindustrialization in India where many handicrafts and cotton small scale industries and especially its tile industry faced severe crisis. The export of raw materials, especially that is cotton, which was and the import of finished products which was available in cheaper rates, left many weavers unemployed who could not compete with the industrially manufactured goods. Besides, the East India Company authorities imposed taxes like Moturfa or Oni looms and many Indian Weavers had to face severe problems like getting their fingers or hands chopped off for not obeying the company rules. This led to the poverty and unemployment in India. Then the discrimination of the Indians in jobs, salaries and promotions also was another cause for the outbreak of the revolt. Coming to there were also so the social causes like starting from the time of William Benedict when Western education or and English education was introduced and encouraged. This left a fear among the Indians that the education system would make the Indians lose their and culture as such. So this was just, they thought that this was, education was deliberately introduced to spoil or destroy the Indian customs and traditions. Nextly, the company authorities propagated evangelicism, rather supported evangelicism, and that is the spread of Christianity and missionary activities also were encouraged by the company authorities, which the, in the Indians felt it as a, as a threat to their religion. The introduction of laws like abolition of sati, legalizing widow remarriages giving the right to the converted Hindus for their ancestral property were regarded as deliberate measures to spread Christianity and spoil the Indian customs and traditions, which made people to feel anti-British 
feelings at that. Make